We've inoculated the staff with Walbachia to keep them from becoming symptomatic. Hmm. That should also contain the infection. How did this happen in the first place? It has to have been a Cypher spy within our ranks. If this is so, then why the Kakango strain? If their intent was to wipe you out... Skullface said the remaining English parasite was close to the boss. If this latest strain was his doing, he wouldn't have tipped his hand. It is possible someone brought eggs onto the base. Without knowing. Stuck to their shoes. Clothing. Well, that makes the most sense to me. Then where did the eggs come from? You mentioned that your boss visited Nzoya Badiopulu. Sure. But his gears disinfected immediately upon return. Hmm. Then he was not the carrier. And not just the boss. All staff dispatched to high-risk regions were quarantined on the flight back. When the symptoms first appeared, we checked and disinfected all equipment used up to that point. Any and all prisoners, soldiers, materials, and animals extracted during missions were also quarantined. So... that just leaves. I have seen children around here. Where are they from? All over. Some were being held hostage at a mine. Then there were the troublemakers at Bwala Yamasa. Bwala Yamasa? Yeah. Their clothes, their things. Did you burn them? They're just kids. We couldn't. And besides, not one of them's shown symptoms. The parasites don't infect prepubescent hosts. Their vocal cords are not fully developed. Well, if infection doesn't occur in children... It is possible they carried eggs on their clothes, and the infection spread from them. Check the kid's stuff. I doubt there is any trace left by now. But if there is, some of those kids must be close to hitting puberty. How could we have missed this? The name Bwala Yamasa got quite a reaction from you. I'm guessing the Kakongo strain was released in that village. Cypher used that region to experiment with vocal cord parasite transmission. The Kakongo strain. The settlements around the refinery upstream of Bwala Yamasa were the proving grounds. They would infect one villager and record transmission speed. Dangerous work. If they failed to contain the infection, it would slip into the surrounding regions. At which point the world found out about the parasites, making them useless as a weapon. Incredible they'd risk such a thing. The test site was densely populated too. A terrible place for such experiments. No doubt. They thought burning everything would wipe away all Cloud traces. Approaching. The settlements were covered in oil anyway. Who would wonder if one day they caught fire? And so it did. They burned it all. Living and dead. Those remains. But they miscalculated. Transmission speed was far faster than anticipated. It may have been the temperature, or hygiene standards, or perhaps the parasites reacted quickly to Kikongo. Whatever the reason, nearly all villages were swiftly infected, and the settlements reduced to mounds of corpses. Making matters worse, the dry season was ending. When it came time to burn the village, the Moneni River had swelled Many of the bodies were waterlogged. Meaning they didn't burn completely. The corpses still contained viable eggs, and the larvae washed downstream. And when the people downstream drank that water, that marked the end for Bwala Yamasa. I learned all of this at the mansion. I warned him of the risk of eggs getting out. And? We are prepared for any eventuality. I get it. Mm. Putting the oil field back online. The oil leaks, saner. They plan to pollute the river. 
prevent the spread of infection. But the oil flow was stopped, and downstream the people of Masa village started using the water again. The PF soldiers deployed at the village were locals, spoke Kikongo. They were infected, and the kids survived. I've heard enough. And who stopped the flow of oil? Don't. We did. <sighs> that confirms it. The source of the Kikongo strain infection was Masa village. And the children brought it here. It is no one's fault. There is no blame to be cast. The parasites, they were tested in other regions? Their physiology requires that they be tested under varied conditions. Another test site was in Afghanistan. So it was the parasites there. Both the Pashto and Tajik languages are spoken in the mountains of Afghanistan. And population density is low. Ideal testing grounds for how accurately the parasites target only the specified language. It is also relatively easy to prevent the spread of infection. And the results? The first test, I am told, was a success. Once the Pashtun Mujahideen were infected with the Pashto strain, they were all but wiped out. The Hamid fighters is Marseille Fort. It was doubly successful. No Tajik Mujahideen or Soviet soldiers became symptomatic. So the parasites proved to be effective. What about the second test? Also supposedly a success. A Pashtun village was the target. However, the original aim was to obtain samples of the infected. In this, they failed. And the village? The Soviets enacted a standard scorched earth operation. That must have been the village where Malak lived before being held captive at Lamarhate Palace. Having had more time to think on it, the details shared with me may have been false. They are madmen who would do anything to cover up the truth. They certainly seem to like tossing their problems in the fire. As a boy, Skullface's life went up in flames. Perhaps that is what fuels his fixation. With fire. Your Wolbachia stopped the infection all right, but I still don't get it. How can a few bacteria change males to females? I know they're only bugs, but... It is not such a rare thing in the natural world. Many insects and nematodes are infected with Wolbachia. But why? They nest in the cell cytoplasm of the host. Even in the egg cells. With a result that the offspring are born infected. Mother to child transmission. However, Wolbachia cannot nest in sperm because they do not have cytoplasm. So even a successful infection of a male ends after a single generation. This means the Wolbachia must resort to maximizing the population of infected females. Sounds like an ethnic cleansing campaign on a tiny scale. Gender change from male to female is their survival tactic. So more females means more Wolbachia carriers so it can keep thriving in the following generations. But the parasites in a human host are supposed to be a mating pair. If there's no male, there'll be no offspring at all. It's killing itself. Slow down. This tactic is intended for environments where a single male can copulate with multiple females. Originally, the Wolbachia did not infect the vocal cord parasites. I created a mutated strain, modifying the Wolbachia so that it could infect monogamous pairs. The Wolbachia's greatest multiplying tactic, the male to female change, worked against itself in the monogamous parasites. Just as you said, then I performed repeated selection of Wolbachia strains until I achieved a hundred percent certainty of male to female conversion. Creating female-female pairs, 
unable to reproduce. And you say the Walbachia affects the host of the host, that is, us, cutting off our means to reproduce? It is almost certain. Of course, we will not turn female. After all, mammals possess no natural gender-changing function. But some Walbachia strains can cause cytoplasmic incompatibility in the host. Is that some cell deformity? Put simply, it means the altered sperm of infected males kill the female's egg on contact. And that's happened to us? Yes. And yet, what occurs in humans is not just simple CI. To date, there are no cases of Volbachia affecting humans. Hmm. The fact that this strain causes this effect. Is it the vocal cord parasite's affinity with humans? <sighs> I do not know enough to say for sure. So the parasite warps the host. Reminds me of what Skullface said. It is the way of all organisms to create their own optimal environment. Just look at you and this base. Organisms that cannot do this are doomed to extinction. The difference with parasites is that their environment is another organism. That creates a connection between life and life. Parasitism, symbiosis, or death. In this way, the host too is challenged to adapt 